In this scenario, Michelle is recommending immunisations to a pregnant mother. Hi Penny, how are you? I'm good, good. How many weeks left? Uh, about eight weeks, yeah. Oh, very exciting, yeah, very, isn't it? Yeah. Um, have you had your immunisations that we recommend for pregnant women? I didn't know there were some recommended. Okay, nobody's yeah. spoken to no. you about you having any vaccines? No, no. Okay, um, we recommend that pregnant women have two different vaccines. Um, okay. One is the influenza vaccine. Yeah. And that is to protect you and your baby. Okay. In the pandemic a few years ago, the big flu pandemic, mm -hmm. um, around the world intensive care units were chock-a-block with pregnant women. Oh, right. And it was out of that pandemic that we actually realised that pregnant women are the most at-risk group from severe complications oh. from flu. And also, if you get flu when you're pregnant, it threatens the pregnancy and it can have health implications for the baby later on as oh, okay. well. The other thing is, is that when we vaccinate you, you make antibodies to protect you, but you pass some of those across the placenta. So your baby will be born with a bit of flu protection as well. All right. Yep. Now, the same thing with whooping cough. Whooping cough is um, a condition, as you know, that we, we get frequent outbreaks of, and yep. it's really dangerous for very young babies. Okay. We still have deaths in New Zealand from oh. whooping cough and even and the babies that die from whooping cough are very young, usually about four, four weeks old. Oh, so really, really. So by vaccinating you with a whooping cough vaccine, um, as well as protecting you, you again pass antibodies on that can tide the baby over until we get round to vaccinating them okay. um, later on. Right. So those are the two vaccines that we recommend. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, it, I mean, it sounds like I really should get them. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. Um, do you want me to make? Do you want me to do them now? I don't really have time now. I've got to go and pick up the kids. But um, yeah, I'll make an appointment for maybe tomorrow. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, you'd be dropping the children at school. Yeah. yeah. What about nine thirty? Yep, that's great. Okay, so we'll put you in for um, nine thirty. Um, you do need to wait for 20 minutes afterwards, so okay. um, no, you know, you're going to yep. be here for at least half an hour um, afterwards, okay. so bring a book. <laughs> okay, so do you need me to write that down for you? Or you um, no, that's okay, I'll remember. Okay. It's just Fabulous. for tomorrow. Yep. So, um, as, did your midwife talk to you about vaccines for your baby or the doctor? No, or? no. Okay, no. they've changed a little bit since your previous right. children would have been vaccinated. Okay. You may have got this leaflet, but I'll give you this cool. one anyway. They're usually in the bounty pack. Right. So this is the what we call the National Immunisation Schedule. These are the vaccines that we recommend okay. across yep. the lifespan. So um, we start at six weeks. Okay, well, I don't think I need to start that early because I'm going to be breastfeeding for the first six months or so. So... Okay. Breastfeeding is really good, and um, and actually there's some research to show that some babies, um, sorry, babies of breastfed mothers respond to some vaccines a little bit better than non-breastfed babies. So okay. it's a really cool you're going to breastfeed, and of course we know it's the right thing to do. But parents um, often think that if you're breastfeeding your baby, you don't need to rush into vaccines because they'll be protected. That's actually not true. Oh, okay. The, vac the breast milk is really good at protecting babies against gut infections. So a breastfed baby will definitely get less diarrhea, less vomiting than, than a bottle fed baby, yeah. uh, generally. But it doesn't protect against rotavirus, which is one of the most serious gastroenteritis, okay. uh, gastroenteritis that they can get. So um, even though you're breastfeeding and it's really good that you're planning to, I would still strongly recommend that you get your baby vaccinated from six weeks. Right, okay. So the vaccines that we, um, we recommend are um, rotavirus. Okay. Now that's an oral vaccine. Rotavirus is a severe gastrointestinal yep. condition that all children will get really. Um, so rotavirus, and that's actually drops in the mouth, so that's quite cool. Oh, that's okay. an injection that's they don't yeah. need to have. And then they get an injection which contains diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, um, polio, hepatitis B and hip vaccine. So it's really good okay. that you can protect your baby from a lot of diseases yep, with just one, just one jab. shot. That's good. Yep. Yeah. But they do get a second shot um, and that's the pneumococcal vaccine. OK, well, I don't think there's much point in the pneumo one because we... The older kids had that men's B one and they've taken that off the schedule. So obviously it 
this one probably doesn't work either. Okay, right. So um, pneumococcal and meningococcal are, are very similar diseases. They present the same um, or very similarly, but they're actually completely different bugs. Right. Now, what happened with the men's B vaccine, which your older children would have had yeah, at school, yeah, presumably. Yeah. Um, what happened with the men's B vaccine was, it was, although it was given at the same time as the schedule, it was never technically on the schedule because okay. it was an epidemic vaccine. Right. We had an epidemic of meningococcal B, a particular strain. We had a vaccine for that, and the vaccine was really good at getting rid of the epidemic. And oh, that's okay. what it was designed to do. It was never designed to stay on the schedule. Right, okay. When, the, when we stopped the men's B program, they then put the pneumococcal vaccine on the schedule because if they'd have put it on earlier, it would have been four injections. Mm. Oh, okay. So um, when the men's B vaccine was stopped, that was the point they put the pneumococcal vaccine on the schedule. Okay. Now, the pneumococcal disease can present as meningitis or blood poisoning, which is what causes the gangrene. Right, yeah. Um, and so it presents in the same way, but it is a completely different bug. And the pneumococcal vaccine has, we've given millions of doses around the world. It's been on schedules in other countries a lot longer than here. Okay. And pneumococcal disease is a really horrible disease. And I would strongly recommend that you have that vaccine. So right. it okay. wasn't a case of that one didn't work. So let's try this one. Okay, this so is, they're for this, different yeah, things. Different, right. different purpose altogether. Okay, I didn't realise that. But yeah, that so, sense, ha yeah. so have a think about that. If you um, take this leaflet and yeah. you've got a, um, um, it, a, a lot of explanation as to the vaccine, talks oh, about okay, the National the Immunisation ones. Register, all right. the different diseases. So if you take that and I've actually got my immunisation folder here. Oh, wow. Um, I've got... Um, oh, here it is. Um, this is from the IMAC website. So if you have a look on the back here, um, there's an 0800 line for parents right. and questions, and there's a website here oh, as well. Okay. So most of these fact sheets came out the website, but right. um, this is one about vaccinating during breastfeeding. Okay. Um, so if I give you that, yep. and um, and then this to have a read through, cool. and it will give you, you know, have a read before the baby comes, because yeah. you're a bit pushed for time yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Um, awesome. And I'll see you tomorrow. Cool. Thank Fabulous. you very much. Okay, nice okay. to see you. Cheers. See ya.